Hello folks, these days even my mother-in-law knows what, or should we say who, ChatGPT is. But not everyone knows that the same engine that is used by this powerful bot is available to third-party applications. And in this video tutorial, I'll show you how to incorporate this neural network into your Java apps and how to make those apps scalable. Let's go! All right, let's have a look at our sample application. The application is uh, called Budget Journey, and what it does, imagine you want to visit some city and you have some budget constraints. The application will suggest you several points of interest, and it will be leveraging the OpenAI GPT uh, models. So right now, if let's say you want to go to Miami, let's see what the application will return, and you are ready to spend $800 in that city, you will get this exception that says that uh, the service is not implemented yet. The application doesn't know how to use the OpenAI GPT APIs. And this is what we are going to fix. All of those APIs are very well documented on the OpenAI.com. And uh, we are going to use GPT 3.5 model today as an example. Also, as a Java uh, application developer, you have two options. You can implement the APIs following the HTTP protocol of the OpenAI, or you can take advantage of the existing open source library, which is called OpenAI Java. And this library can be easily <coughs> downloaded from the Maven Central. Okay, so let's uh, go to the application. So this is my application tab. Again, uh, that OpenAI Java library is already included in my uh, PAM XML file. And here is what we already have. We are going to use uh, the database for the scalability purposes. And this is what I have, the CT3 repository for. We'll talk about it later. This is the OpenAI service uh, object that is going to be used by the app to connect to the neutral neural network. And at least you need to have uh, a few parameters to get this service working. You need to create and provide your API key. Uh, my API key is stored in the application properties file of this Spring Boot application. Also, you can define uh, the API timeout, meaning that for how long you're going to wait uh, for a response from the OpenAI service. Again, as for the model, I'm using the GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is very well optimized. And this is my system task message. What it does, when my application will connect to the OpenAI, and it will be asking uh, the model to return several points of interest for a specific city and budget. But also you want the model to behave somehow. So there is a so-called system type message that requires the API to do something in a certain way. For instance, this system message says that you are going to be the API server that responds in the JSON format. And don't say anything else. It will be returning just the JSON. And then what you need to do, the user will be asking about, you know, some points of interest and you need to consider that budget limit and then try to allocate, you know, budget, 30% of the budget to restaurants, bars, then 30% to shows, amusement parks, other side things, and the remainder dedicate to shopping, right? And here is in the end, we are clarifying how the response in the JSON format uh, has to look like. We are going to have the places uh, array and each place needs to have place name, place short info and the cost, how much how much money does it cost to visit that place, right? So this is the system message. A little bit verbose, but it's uh, very expressive. So the model will exactly understand what needs to be done. Okay, so let's move forward and implement uh, the OpenAI API. First, we need to create an instance of this OpenAI service. That's the easiest step. So here is, as I said, you need to provide your API key and duration. I can read the duration from the properties file, or you can define it this way. For instance, let's say that you are ready to wait for up to 40 seconds for the OpenAI to respond to your application. Otherwise, an exception is going to be generated. 
And these days it's actually uh, reasonable to set uh, the timeout because the service is overloaded uh, and it, sometimes it can take 5 seconds, 10 seconds or more, 12 seconds to get your response depending on what exactly do you want uh, from the service. Okay, so once it's done, let's say connect it to OpenAI. Once we are connected, uh, let's go ahead and implement this method. This method is presently used by our front-end that runs on Vadim. So the front-end calls this suggest points of interest method and passes the city name and the budget from that UI that I showed you. So we use these two parameters to craft this user prompt. The user will be actually sending this message, I want to visit the city and have the budget uh, of X dollars. And as you see right now, uh, this is what this method returns, you know, just an error saying that the service is not implemented. And this is what you see Vadin displays on the screen. So let's fix it. So we already have the OpenAI service ready. And next step is we need to create a chat completion request. Okay, so new chat completion request builder. And then you need to provide several parameters. First, you want to provide your model. Uh, we have the, it's defined in this variable. Uh, next, you want to provide temperature. So what the temperature is, it defines how the randomness of the model response. For instance, the higher the value, uh, the more random the response can be or more creative. The lower the value, uh, the more distinct it will be. Okay, so we will set this uh, for our task. And the most important parameter after that is to define messages. So the prompts, let's create a list of these messages. F the first chat message, uh, let it be the system message. And as I said, there are several roles that are supported by the model. One of those roles is the system role that helps the model to understand how it should behave, what needs to be done. And we pass this system task message that explains this model is just an API server that uh, finds a list of different places and returns those places in the JSON format. So that's going to be the first message. And the second message is going to be the user message, which is the role user. And this prompt that we have just generated. Okay. So probably, well, yeah, this is what I need to do. I need to call uh, build. Okay, ready. And let's format it a little bit. So this is what we've got the chat completion request. And next step is to send this request to the OpenAI API. For that, we are using the OpenAI service and we can create chat completion. We send our request and then uh, we, will get, we will get choices, sort of our, the response. And for each choice, let's do this. We need to process each choice because it's going to include the JSON if everything went well. And let me read this JSON into a string builder object. Okay. Builder, append, choice. You have the choice. It's delivered in chunks usually. Uh, get message and uh, get content. Easy. So that's it. And finally, uh, let's uh, do this JSON response. You get builder, sorry, builder to string. Ready. Okay. And we can print it out. Why don't we do that? So let's print it to the console so the, that you will see that the model did what we asked about. And finally, we will use this generate points of interest method that will take this JSON and prepare a list of points of interest. Okay. And those points of interest will be passed back to the Vadin front end. 
So to f to do that, uh, let's. Uh, we no longer need this error. Instead, we are saying response set points of interest generate points of interest JSON response. Looks like it's done. Okay, let's see. Our Spring Boot application has been recompiled and reloaded. So now looks like yeah, and we successfully connected to the OpenAI. Wonderful. Now let's give a try to this implementation. Again, we are going to Miami and we want to spend $800. And now you see that we have successfully connected to the model. And as I said, on average, it can take between 10 seconds and 20 seconds for model to complete this request. Especially the model is uh, busy these days. All right, wonderful. So here is the list of interests. You can go and spend around $250 at some Cuban uh, restaurant. Then just go to the shopping mall and visit the Wolfsonian uh, Art and Design Museum. Why not? Probably not the worst idea. And if you go here, so here as you can see the response. This is the JSON response object that would return by the model. So exactly what we asked to do in our system message class. Okay, let's give another try. Let's say that you decide to go to Boston and you want to spend, uh, I don't know, $400 there. Let's wait. It takes time to process all of those requests. So be patient. Okay, 20 seconds later, we've uh, got uh, these recommendations. Exceptional. It's, it was easy to implement the application. But again, it's not scalable in a way that uh, the API is a bottleneck and this OpenAI uh, API is not free. So for every request you send, you're going to pay. The longer the message, uh, the more requests, the more you pay. And also you might have users abroad, meaning that they all will be using your application. One of the ways how to make this application scalable is to store responses and suggestions in your database. So my database is YugaByteDB. I'm running uh, the following cluster. It's a multi-node cluster that is presently uh, deployed in uh, US Virginia across three availability zones. So Probably I'm targeting the United States uh, user base right now. So let me improve the latency by storing the latest suggestions in the database. Let's go back to the implementation. So this is my city repository method. And here is the only method that we are going to use right now. We are going to check if there are points of interest already exist in the database by calling this API. Okay. And the database stores the JSON format as is. So like also, for instance, if you want to run database queries over the JSON, it will be possible. OK, so let's do that. The Vadin calls this method, as you remember, when the user asks for any recommendations. And here is let's uh, go to the city trips repository and try to find uh, uh, points of interest for their given budget and city. Okay. Uh, existing suggestions. Okay, let's name it this way. Done. So if we already have suggestions, right? Then let's do this. Let's just go ahead and uh, return them. To the, to the front end. If we don't have anything cached in the database, which will be the default behavior, and if needed, you can preload, warm up your database with the most frequent recommendations. We will go to the OpenAI API. We will read this API. And let's see if the API generates everything without any issue. Let's do it this way. Then we will store this result in the database. So list a point of interest.
So this is what we are going to return here. Okay. And uh, finally, as long as this method executed successfully, meaning that the JSON was formatted properly and holding no any issues, then we can store this result in our database for the future references. Uh, city trip object, and we need to pass uh, the city name, the budget, and the raw JSON object that was generated by the GPT 3.5 model. Okay, looks like that. The job is done. Let's wait while the Spring Boot is recompiled and studied. And every time the, the, the application is restarted, it removes all of the uh, records from their database. So it's going to start clean and fresh. Okay, no any issues. Going back to my application, let's run the same check for Miami. Miami. And I have, let's say, $6 in mind. $600. Okay, waiting. The first call goes to the OpenAI and it will take between 10, 20 seconds or more, depending on how busy the service is right now. Okay, 20 seconds later, we've got these recommendations for in Miami, if you have $600. And if you keep executing this method, you will see that the result is returned momentarily because we've cached everything in our database. You see, we are requesting from the database and the data is already there. And when it was read for the first time, you can see that we inserted that in the database. Let's give another try. And now let's say that you want to go to London. If you go to London and you want to spend, I don't know, $1,300 there, then certainly we will not have any recommendations for this trip yet. Uh, but uh, let's wait and it will be cached. All right, 25 seconds later this time, we've got uh, the following recommendations, a long list of places where you want to go in London, from the museums, you know, to some other landmarks, uh, and to the restaurants and bars and shopping centers. So it's it's going to be a fun trip. Okay, so now it's cached. But in, you also remember that previously we asked for Miami, $600. If you ask right now, it's returned momentarily, right? Because it's already uh, stored in the database. And the same for London, momentarily. Okay, so this is how you can make your application scalable. Also, one important aspect about Hugo by DB, if your application has a true global user base from different countries and continents, then you can even store all those recommendations locally as close to the user as possible. How do you do that? One of the options is to create a geo-partitioned cluster. Uh, for instance, let's pick JCP. And this multi-region deployment, in the multi-region deployment, you're selecting partition by region. And then you can, let's say, pick you want to have something in uh, Hong Kong. Then you want to have users in Europe and you want to have users certainly in the uh, United States. And then you're creating your multi-node single stretch cluster across the countries and continents that are needed for your application and then the application based on the user location can store these recommendations as close to the user as possible and thus improving the overall latency of your app and thus minimizing the let's say the number of requests and load on the openai gpt apis okay wonderful enjoy it all right, it was fast and easy, wasn't it? You'll find a reference to this sample application in the description. So download it, customize it, learn the OpenAI GPT APIs, build the new types of Java apps. And if you think this video tutorial will be useful to watch to other Java engineers, then ring the bell, like this content, and subscribe to our channel to get notified about future videos. Stay tuned. Bye-bye now.